Hey guys, Dantix here, back with another Cyberpunk 2077 guide. Today showing off 5 iconic weapons that are incredibly easy to miss, but worth a look. Especially if you're a collector, or like burning things alive, smashing things with shovels, or blowing them up. Three of these iconics are in one small area, which means you can grab them all within the space of 10 minutes. One of them though is within a difficult side mission, and the last during the end game. So buckle up, and let's get right into it. The first weapon we're on the hunt for is the Buzzsaw. It's a power submachine gun that also has a property of penetrating rounds. This means through walls and through enemies. I have no investment in the assault skill, and this is the kind of damage you can expect. To get it, we will need to go here, to this suspected organized crime activity in Northside. Once you're there, you have to clear out some Tiger Claws and some bots. I'm using the 05 rifle here, which I'll show you how to get later, and the Comrade's Hammer, which I've made a separate video on. Clear out the enemies and finish the job. On the body, we see the legendary crafting spec for the Buzzsaw. To craft it, you need the Edge Runner Artisan perk, which doesn't take that much investment in the crafting tree, and you also need some common, rare, and epic crafting components. If you have the perks, you can continue to craft it all the way up to legendary quality. For this video, I just kept it rare, but expect the legendary to be much more potent, and expect to do a ton more damage with an assault-focused build. You can do what I did, craft it and use it to get your next iconic. So we'll see the buzzsaw shown off a little more during the side mission, losing my religion, which you can find here. A monk whose religion forbids him using body modifications has been taken and modified against his will, and now his brother is in peril. Go to the location marked, and if you're feeling up to it, put on a non-lethal mod to your buzzsaw to comply with the monk's request not to kill, though I really don't know how this isn't killing the maelstrom. I like the use of the crane here to get rid of their cover, even though the buzzsaw can shoot through it. <laughs> Dan is a moron. So you save the monk and finish the mission. Right next to him though is the Fenrir. It's another power submachine gun, but this one deals thermal damage with an increased chance to burn. The bigger point though is there's less bullet spread and a higher bullet impact, meaning you'll be hitting your target more often and applying more stagger. All these stats go up when you craft a legendary version, but I'll be showing off the basic rare version in this video. Those who like Norse mythology, ironically, we're going to be using this fiery submachine gun called Fenrir to get another fiery weapon from a gangster named Ymir. You find the suspected organized crime activity here, and it's right next to where you just were with the monks in Northside. All you need to do is burn these meat sacks to a crisp with your brand new gun. I'm not exactly the most accurate person while recording, that's for sure, but you can see even a Nufti can take down these gang goons easily. Ymir though, dodges your attacks with his cyberware. Still, shouldn't be too hard to take him down. On his body is the crafting spec for the Psalm 11.6. If you plug that Bible passage into Google, you'll see it reads, On the wicked he will rain, fiery coals, burning sulfur, a scorching wind will be their lot. So naturally, you assume this weapon is all about burning things as well. So let's take a look. It's a power assault rifle and has the ability Pure Hellfire. This gun deals additional thermal damage, greatly increasing the chance to apply burn. Like all these crafted weapons, I recommend going for the random stat in crit damage, as it will drastically increase your overall DPS, though crit chance if yours is low is acceptable. Now let's take a look at this demonic rifle during the gig, Dirty Biz. Immediately you can see it lives up to the Bible passage, burning targets easily. Interesting tidbit, during the B-roll footage we saw before release of the game, the player used this gun during the Monk Rescue, so it seems CD Projekt Red intended for us to get these iconics together. Now the next legendary will have you going on a little excursion. Many people I know have never completed the side jobs to beat the champions of each region, mostly because they require a bit of body and brawling investment. In doing so, they missed out on one of the best snipers in the game. The first thing you want to do is track this side job, the Beat on the Brat Iroyo. 
travel to the location and you'll run into Buck, overcompensating hard with a big rifle, titanium limbs, and the need to prove that he's the best. You can use that to your advantage by putting up the wager from 2,900 to 12,000. He doesn't have the cash, so you can goad him into putting up the sniper rifle. It's a difficult fight if you're at three body. In order to make this go smoothly, you can pick up the Gorilla Arm Cyber Mod. You want to be charging up a heavy attack, hitting and backing up while blocking. Do not attempt to stand still or to parry unless you're good at it. He will one shot you and he does take a beating if you do this too early. After the fight he will be a sore loser, so you will have to take out him and his flunkies. I chose to spare his life but you really don't need to. Grab your gun, it's the 05 power sniper rifle. It has huge damage with a 4.6 headshot multiplier, so it will be mostly a one shot one kill. The kicker though is that it has explosive rounds, hitting anyone around the target with splash damage, which is similar to Comrade's hammer. You've already seen this sniper in use getting the buzzsaw, but take a look here. It easily dispatches these morons. When they group up, it's even easier. This is with no assault skill investment, so it can only be better with upgrades, mod skills and perks. Finally, we have a bonus. The best hammer in the game is actually not a hammer at all, it's a shovel. If you do want to give your enemies a shoveling, you're going to need to cross the path of no return. That's right, you're going to have to trigger the final story mission. Don't worry, you can always continue on after with this in your possession if you choose the right outcomes. I can't tell you which without spoiling, but a quick Google search will help. I'll show you what the weapon is and you can decide for yourself if you want to know where it is. I've avoided spoiling it, but I can't avoid you seeing everything. First though, here's the hammer, the Caretaker's Spade. It's a legendary iconic with a huge DPS stat. The iconic weapons usually add some kind of effect, well this one's effect is simply a ton more damage. This is the strongest hammer in the game and it's a shame it's locked until the end. To even be offered the shovel, you need to choose the path called Knocking on Heaven's Door. It's an option involving Johnny and that's all I'm going to say. You'll land in some trees after a short segment, which I won't show, and then you'll be led to this rock. If you don't look at the rock or duck behind it, you'll kind of miss this weapon like I did the first time round. It's really dark. Here we see it in action. I have three in body at this point with no investment into brawling, yet I take out these agents like they're weeds and I'm an angry underpaid gardener. Even this wave of mechs you're not supposed to trigger the fight to fall to the mighty shovel. And with that, I have to leave you. Those were the five iconics that I wanted to make sure you didn't miss. Are there any that you'll be picking up? Let me know below. Thank you so much for watching guys and for everything RPG and Cyberpunk, you're already in the right place. Ciao friends.